looks like it's no, hovering. No. <laughs> okay. There's no shoulder rest. There's no shoulder rest. Okay. Right, so there's no shoulder rest. Goodbye, shoulder rest. There's still no shoulder rest. Okay, again, no shoulder rest. That's not a problem! Outrage aside, that is actually a really, really funny video, and I do suggest you go watch the whole thing. However, the fact remains that a shoulder rest is not in any way necessary for violin playing. Exhibit A. Right, so there's no shoulder rest. Back shoulder rest. Exhibit B. Right, so there's no shoulder rest. <laughs> And last and most certainly least, exhibit C. He's still not shoulder rest. Okay, that last one had a little bit of self-aggrandizement, but I think my point has been made. I may have only shown three examples, but there are literally hundreds of examples out there of what is probably some of the best violin playing you will ever hear, all done by people without using a shoulder rest. Now the shoulder rest has really only been in use for about 50 years or so, and I mean before that nobody really thought they needed any sort of apparatus to help them hold up the instrument. And it's not like the shoulder rest was invented as a response to the now much more difficult music being written at the time, as was the case with the chin rest. Now that being the case, the only reason I can imagine why anyone thought the shoulder rest needed to become a permanent part of violin playing is because, quite frankly, it's a lot easier to teach a group of little kids to play with one than without one. Thanks, Dr. Suzuki! To be fair, as much as I might make fun of the Suzuki method and a lot of the bad technique that it teaches, oddly enough, I discovered that in a lot of the early Suzuki pictures with Suzuki himself, he didn't use a shoulder rest, and neither did many of the students. So honestly, I don't know where the whole Suzuki pedagogy teach kids to hold the violin with their neck and chin came from, unless he was actually telling students to hold the violin up with your neck and chin, with no shoulder rest, like this. In which case, Mark O'Connor was completely right about everything. Now, I know a lot of you are also thinking now, um, thanks for the history lesson, but I play just fine with a shoulder rest. Why should I care? Well, the fundamental technique of playing with a shoulder rest and playing without one is completely different. And from what I've noticed in my own students, in my own teaching, people that have come to me playing with a shoulder rest for their whole lives really, really benefit from understanding how technique works when you play without one. Playing with typical Suzuki level shoulder rest technique makes the main support and fundamental constant of the violin's relationship to the body, the shoulder and the neck. Whereas playing in what would be the more traditional, old style way of playing would make the fundamental constant of and support of the instrument the left hand. Now this is significant because violin technique is primarily tactile. It is based on what you feel and what you hear, not as much on what you see. And just in case anybody wonders, I am talking about more advanced violin technique, not beginner technique, which obviously has to use a lot of visual input. Now, learning to hold the violin in the left hand as opposed to on the shoulder emphasizes this tactile relationship the left hand has with the violin, especially the relationship between fingers and the thumb. Now, if your fingers have a better relationship with your thumb, then they're getting a lot more support and stability from your thumb. This helps with a variety of things including your intonation, because it can help you make little tiny adjustments to your fingers by using your thumb as leverage against your fingers while you play. This can also help with shifting, because it enables you to use your hand and thumb as leverage, especially downward shifting, to pull your fingers down the fingerboard, using your thumb as the main point of leverage rather than your elbow. Another advantage that, oddly enough, has absolutely nothing to do with the thumb. Most of this is about the thumb. But that absolutely has nothing to do with the thumb is the fact that playing without a shoulder rest puts the violin 
at an angle that is more ergonomically suited to sound production. So playing without a shoulder rest actually puts the violin closer to being straight parallel with the floor. So that means that the weight of your arm, the weight of the bow, can work with gravity going straight down into the string. So there's a lot less work, a lot less pressure that the violinist has to then put into the sound production. A looser violinist creates a better sound. However, a shoulder rest fixes the violin typically in one spot and tends to be at a bit of an angle this way. So now the violinist not only has to worry about getting the weight of the bow and the weight of the arm straight down into the string, but also has to apply some pressure going sideways. Now the final reason that I think that you should learn how to play the violin without a shoulder rest, i.e. holding the violin in your left hand as opposed to with your chin, is because when we teach kids to start out playing by holding the violin with their neck and chin, with a shoulder rest, we are teaching them to start their musical and violinistic journey with tension. Tension! You know that thing every single violin teacher at a summer music program was trying to relieve you of? Well, okay, very nice. Good arguments for your position. How do I go about holding the violin properly in the left hand rather than with my chin? I am so glad you asked. Well, first off, let's start with the part that you are already familiar with, where the violin goes in relationship to the shoulder, in this case, the collarbone, because the end button should go right over and the part of the wood right under the end button should rest right on top of your collarbone, like so. Now, some people do find having the wood touch their collarbone uncomfortable. Quite frankly, you'll get used to it. Also, I'm not going to bother with talking about the angle of the instrument to the shoulder because if you're watching this video and you're switching from or attempting to switch from playing with a shoulder rest to playing without one, you should already know that. Now, once the violin is resting on the collarbone, all it takes now is for the chin to turn, look straight down at the scroll, and just let your neck go. Just rest on it. That's what it's called. It's a chin rest. Just let it sit there. Hanging out. The natural weight of the chin is actually plenty of pressure to keep the violin from sliding off your collarbone. And even then, the collarbone actually provides a pretty good shell for the violin, so it won't be disturbed even with no chin for most of what you play. This allows a lot less tension, a lot more freedom in your neck when you play a la David Oistrach. Actually, this video of Oistrach playing the Shostakovich Violin Concerto Cadenza basically is a masterclass of everything that I've been saying about the proper way to play without a shoulder rest and the benefits thereof. One thing you'll notice immediately if you're paying attention is that because his violin is not fixed to a specific spot and to a specific angle on his shoulder, he's actually able to manipulate the violin this way, or back and forth, depending on whether he's playing on a lower string or a higher string. If he's playing on a lower string, he might shift the violin a little bit more this way so he can get a lot more direct gravitational pull right from the bow down into the G string, or if he's playing on the E string, he can move the violin here. Here also we see a fantastic example of what it looks like to properly hold the violin, predominantly support the violin in your left hand, and the relationship that then is encouraged between the thumb and the fingers in relationship to the fingerboard. Also notice here how his thumb is primarily involved in his shifting, especially in the higher positions once the thumb hits the base of the neck up here, especially in his downward shifting.
Now, I realize I've gone on a bit of a tangent just talking about how David Oistrakh plays in the Shostakovich cadenza, though I do suggest you go and watch that whole video. It's on YouTube. Type in David Oistrakh, Shostakovich Violin Concerto Cadenza. It is really a fantastic masterclass in the proper, basically a, an incredible museum-level microcosm of exactly how to play without a shoulder rest and to play with supporting violin in your left hand. Which, of course, brings me to the most important question of the day. How exactly do you hold the violin in your left hand? Well, we've already covered the fact that the violin sits on the collarbone and that the chin just rests as aptly named the chin rest. Now, when it comes to the actual left hand, on a default level, and it changes from person to person, but basically at a default level, you have two points of contact for the neck of the instrument. One is right here at the base of your first finger, and then the other one is just right above the first knuckle of your thumb. So what you want to do, hold your violin like this very carefully, take your hand, put it like this, and rest the violin right over, right around the nut, all the way back here on your hand, on the finger right at that base knuckle. And then just take your thumb and let it tap right there. It might be a little bit different depending how big your thumb is, but want to make sure that your thumb doesn't go up too high. And then you want to have a relationship between these two fingers where it's secure enough to where when the violin sits in here that you don't um, you don't squeeze it so it's not too tight but it doesn't it's not so loose that the violin just falls in so the violin is just like a little crevasse it just comes in here and just sits in here and then you have the freedom to hold the violin here while moving your fingers. Now as you start to play this way, and I would suggest you start out just by playing some scales, just start with upward scales. Keep your chin completely off the violin. Just try playing some scales, and as you shift, push the violin into your neck. That'll help increase sort of the tactile stimulation of playing the violin. First just practice doing upward scales, and you'll notice as you start to play this way, your thumb will take a variety of different positions to support the fingers. This is exactly what should be happening. Everybody's hand is a little bit different and everybody's hand and thumb is going to take different positions depending on what they need to do. For instance, this is my default position, especially if I'm playing in the bottom three fingers or so, but sometimes when I want to get a little bit more vibrato on something, a little bit more edge, a little bit more support, especially on my fourth finger, then my thumb will come under and I will be able to get that support. This is especially true once I get into the higher positions. Sometimes when I'm playing something really melodic, my thumb will come under and support the violin like this. But a lot of other times if I'm playing very quick passages, it just stays like this. My thumb ends up being very, 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 very flexible and can support my fingers in any way that I need. Now, once you get very used to that, I would suggest when you start doing it, just start with scales, by the way, single note scales, just, just as an addendum to your practicing. You'll notice it'll really help things a lot. Once I do that for a little while, I would suggest that you start practicing going downward. And at first, you actually still don't need your chin as much. The chin is just there to keep the violin you know, a little bit more stable here, depending on any crazy stuff you might be doing. When you're doing a downward scale, you actually don't need your chin as much because if your thumb, and this will depend on your hand size, if you have a really small hand, you might not be able to do it and you'll have to use your chin to keep the violin up here. But if your thumb can hook up to here for most of the fingerboard, like my thumb can, then basically all you need the thumb for is, I mean, all you, you don't need the chin because you can just use the, your thumb to help pull your hand down when you're shifting. And you only need the chin on here to keep you from pulling the violin off when you switch down to here and to here. And even then, it doesn't take that much. You can barely touch it. And it's okay if the violin moves a little bit. If you go watch the video of Milstein playing Paganini on, you'll notice his violin is shaking all over the place. Doesn't affect his playing one bit. As a matter of fact, he looks just about as loose as his violin, which is exactly how I think you'd want to be able to play. Now, the fact remains you can actually still play with this type of technique of holding the violin in your left hand and use your shoulder rest. Now, for me, the primary example of doing this would be the Israeli violinist and former concertmaster of the Berlin Phil, Guy Braunstein. Shoulder rest or no, he is clearly holding the violin in his left hand. 
and hardly using his chin to the fine on his own. As a matter of fact, he has almost as much freedom of his chin and neck as does David Oistrock, and he's clearly using his thumb to help support his fingers and help him in things like shifting. And this brings me to my final point, which is you don't actually need to get rid of your shoulder rest to take advantage of this style of playing. However, if you were taught from the beginning to play with a shoulder rest, it's likely that you were taught to hold the violin with your chin and neck, and therefore have an underdeveloped left hand. And so what I'd suggest to you, if you're struggling with things like shifting, intonation, or just general left hand strength, fourth finger, anything to do with your left hand, you're going to benefit from learning how to support the violin and move around using your thumb as the main support, rather than learning how to play just with the chin being the main support. So even if you decide to keep your shoulder rest, you would do well. Even if you decide to not try to play without your shoulder rest, but instead just take your chin off and let it sit in your hand and let it sit here and not use your chin to hold it up, I guarantee you're going to make great strides in your technique. You're going to discover new things about your left hand. It'll be an all-around boon for your playing. Anyway, that's about all I have to say about the matter. If you have been playing without a shoulder rest for a long time and you'd like to add in your two cents and explain to everyone why it's such a great idea to learn how to hold the violin in your hand rather than with your chin, or if you've been playing with a shoulder rest for a long time and you'd like to figure out to give this a try, or if you've been playing with a shoulder rest for a long time and you think everything I've said here is just absolute nonsense and of course you should be holding the violin with your chin and your shoulder, not your left hand, I'd love to hear from all of you. So. Please go ahead, comment on this video, like this video, check us out on Facebook, check out murphymusicacademy.org. We've got a lot of great blogs and other videos that we put up there. Anyway, I've been Tobias Murphy for Murphy Music Academy, and remember, no matter which way you decide to go, they still not shoulder us.